My name is Kevin Mathis, and I just want to say hello, Juno, and whoever may be watching from the Philippines. I just want to say thank you for sharing your story with me about your father leaving your family and getting caught up in the drug world. I know a lot of people today have had parents leave them and abandon them and fathers leave uh, with this whole baby mama and baby daddy generation, single parenthood. And to all those, you know, today that, you know, they're struggling to provide for their families and struggling to find purpose, caught up in corrupt government systems, living life without purpose and hope. And what I want to do is I want to share with you some hope tonight because I believe that the greatest story ever told is found in the Christian Holy Scriptures. And I think that one, and you may being brought up Catholic in the Catholic world may have heard about this stuff, but I, I think I'm going to tell this in a way that will make sense of where the world is today and what we've become and where we're going. And I think it'll answer a lot of the questions that we have. And But it may not give all the answers, but it will make sense of the world that we live in. And I think that it will give us hope. And I don't think there's anything else out there that does. And so I want to begin in the beginning of the story of how God created the world and he created it good. He created the crops, the, the fruits and the plants for animals and humans to eat from. And he created the sun to give light to the world, the moon to give light at night, the stars to be markers for years and seasons. And then he created this, these two people, Adam and Eve, and he placed them in a garden. And he, and he called them to cultivate the garden, to steward it, to take care of it to be fruitful and multiply, to rule over creation. And Adam and Eve, get this, they loved their jobs. They got to name the animals. They got to water the plants. They took care of it. Crops grew with unyielding, unlimited. It was all good. And it seemed like paradise. It seemed like perfect. And then one day this snake entered the garden and tempted them to eat from this tree that God told them not to eat from, which represents doing things their own way, running from God, doing things your own way, being God, being God yourself. And then they ate from it. And they were banished from the garden, but God still looked after them and provided for them. But now things were different. Life was hard. The ground didn't produce crops like they wanted it to. Pregnancy was hard and painful like it is today without modern medicine. And the whole world begins to drift toward meaninglessness. And that's kind of the story. Sometime later, God speaks to this guy named Abraham and calls him to go to the land that I will show you. And Abraham believes God and he goes. And Abraham is considered to be right with God just simply by believing. Now, Abraham wasn't a perfect man. He, he, he wasn't necessarily morally perfect. But he believed God. And so God made a covenant with Abraham that he would become the father of many nations and that through the world he will be blessed. And I want to quickly go back to Genesis where it says God made a promise to Adam and Eve that one day that, that the seed of the woman will crush that snake that ruined their lives. Now Abraham's family... God is with them. He, you know, Abraham has a son and has a grandson. And, and he begins to create this nation of people that weren't morally. They did some crazy stuff, but God is still with them and, and, and changes them. 
They end up in slavery to Egypt for 400 years. God raises up this dude named Moses to rescue them. And he establishes this kingdom, uh, this this place of worship. This, this is called a tabernacle. But it's kind of like a church, but a little bit different. Time goes by. Israel becomes one of the most powerful nations in the Middle East during the reign of King David and King Solomon. God makes a promise with David that one of his ancestors will sit on his throne and he will become a king with a kingdom that has no end. Now the same old story happens. Israel drifts off runs from God, they repent, they come back to God, and it's the same old story. God sends them prophets to warn them, and one of the prophets says that, talks about that one day they were gonna raise up this leader who would bring justice to the nations, who would bring favor from the Lord, who will set free those who are in prison, who are oppressed. And all along the way, God makes this promise that one day this king is going to come and rescue them. But they end up in exile in Babylon. And then one day they get their country back, but the Romans are now in control. But scripture says that when the fullness of time came, God sent forth his son born of a woman to redeem those under the law. Born of a woman, that same language back in Genesis, the seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. And God sends his son into the world. And this, this Jesus is God and man. He's, he, he's different from every other man that's ever been in the world because he is God himself and man at the same time. He was born of a virgin, which, which that's what it means, the seed of the woman. And Jesus heals the sick, raises the dead. He's with outcasts. He loves those and reveals himself to those that society writes off the oppressed, the fatherless, and they hang him on a cross. And he dies for the sin of the whole wide world. And he triumphs over his enemies. And he rises from the dead on the third day. And in Jesus completes Abraham's family story because all of Israel and our story and his story is summed up in one person that has now become Israel, that has now become the family group of people that will bring blessing to the world. And that's simply what Jesus does. He calls his people to go into all the world and make disciples of all the nations to make the world right again, to, to, to fight for the oppressed, to love those who are unloved, to be there for people who have no fathers. And God is now making the world right again through Jesus. In fact, in John, it says this, that those who receive Jesus become children of God. Jesus, after he rose from the dead, ascends into heaven, which is kingdom uh, uh, terminology that means he's now reigning. And I know that maybe it doesn't really look like the world is, is, is going God's way many times. But God is doing something different. He's changing the world from the inside. He wants to stop people from doing evil by changing them and giving them purpose. But he does promise that one day 
He will wipe away every tear from our eyes. That there'll be no more death, no more suffering. And there'll be a world called the new heavens and the new earth where there'll be no more death, a world without end. And we'll get to kind of start over again and do God and, and rule over creation and discover things God's way, but this time without the effects of the fall. So I want to say to you, it, it, Juno and whoever might be listening, is that God wants to adopt you as his own son. He won't be like your father. He won't be like earthly fathers. He will never leave you or forsake you or abandon you. He will love you and comfort you and be there for you. He'll show you how to live life. And yes, he will punish you when you do wrong. Or discipline you is a better word. But he'll do it out of love. So it's my hope today that you will experience the love of God. And become a part of his family. And become a part of this proclaiming his kingdom to all the world. So that you can be a part of his fulfilled kingdom. When it's complete. That's my prayer. Know that. Know that there is a God who loves you and who will give you hope. He won't take away all of your problems, but he'll give you a hope that will shine beyond tomorrow.